Welcome to the BART PE Builder tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to cover how to create a BART PE CD with all versions of our software on it. This is a very easy process, but we get a lot of questions asking exactly how to do it, so we decided to make a tutorial for you to make it easier. Be sure that you have internet access, a blank CD, and a copy of your Windows XP CD with at least Service Pack 1 on it. If you do not have Service Pack 1 on your CD, you can go to runtime.org slash slip.htm to get step-by-step -step directions on how to do this process. Let's start by going to our website at runtime.org and in the left-hand column under How To's, select How to Create a Bootable CD-ROM. From this page, if you go to the second link that says PE Builder and click on it, it will take you to Bart's page. From here, you will need to select Download on the left-hand side of the menu. This will take you to the download demo page where you will choose the top download under the latest versions. This will take you to the actual download page where you can download that version of the software from all over the world. Select one of the versions and download it. Depending on what browser you're using, you will either be asked to save or open. If you're given the opportunity to open, do so now. Since we are using Firefox and cannot open the download, we will save this to the desktop and then run it from there. If you save the download, you will have a file called pebuilder3110a.exe. However, the numbers at the end could be higher for a newer version than the current one available today. Double click on that file and follow all the prompts to install it. The only thing I did differently was to create a desktop icon. This is so I can access it easier at a later date. Once it is finished installing, be sure that Launch PE Builder is checked, and then click Finish. Now you will need to agree to the PE Builder license. You should read through this before agreeing. Now you have the option of searching for the Windows installation files. This is a good idea if you have put your Windows XP CD in the computer and are not sure of the exact location. We are going to click No because we already know where these files are stored. Now it is time to click the plugins button. This is where we will add our software. From inside this screen you can see what the name of the plugin is, what the name of the INF is, and if it's active or not. Unless you know what you're doing, you should not change any of this. Now we need to add our software. Go back to runtime.org, click on the how to create a bootable CD-ROM, and scroll down. You will see the plugins for all of our software. You will then need to download the plugins that you need, or all of them and save them to disk in a place you can find them. We save them to our desktop. Go back to the BART PE plugin page and choose Add. It will ask where the files are located. Select the first file and either double click it or select Open. You will then be presented with the name of the folder. Just leave this as the default and select OK. You will now want to locate the program in the program list and be sure it is set to Yes for Enabled. You will want to do the same for the remaining files. Now, if you have a license key for the software already, select the program you have the license for and select Edit. A text editor will open up. You will see a place that says My Name and My Key. In front of these lines is a semicolon. You must remove this so that the line can be read by the software. We get emails about this all the time. A semicolon in a text file will comment the line out so it is never read by the software. If you enter your name and key and it is still telling you that it is unregistered, it is because you forgot to remove this semicolon.
You will now need to close Notepad and save it if you have entered your registration information. The information I have provided is not valid, so we will not save these changes. Now we are done. Click the Close button to get back to the main screen. The easiest thing to do at this point is select Burn to CD slash DVD. Put in your blank CD and click Build. A box will appear telling you that a directory does not exist. Just click Yes to create it, and you will now be presented with Microsoft's end user agreement. This is not for the PE Builder, this is for Windows itself. Click I agree if you do agree, and it will start the process. Once this is done, it will write the data to the CD and verify the data has been written to the CD, and you will be done. Now you can boot off of the CD and have all of our software available to you. Since this software is not created by us, we do not support it. If you need help, go back to the BART page at nu2.nu slash pebuilder slash help.